Okay, recording. Hello, everybody that's joining us on YouTube. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us today. We're going to be painting on masa paper, and we're beginning. We're going to be painting a, a cherry blossom tree, <laughs> and. Uh, Here we go. So this is a piece of masa paper. It's made, it's Japanese machine made rice paper. It's, uh, it's both internally and has external sizing on the side that's smooth. Now, some people paint on the smooth side, but I always like how it looks when I paint on the rough side. So I always write a little, little word, uh, top. No, I can't find a pencil. They're all at my top. So that when, when it gets wet, I can tell once sometimes when it's wet, you can't tell which side's which. And then you need a backing board. And this is just a piece of 200 pound. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is crinkle it. And what I need to do is wet both sides. Not, a, not so it's sopping wet, but just so that it's slightly damp. If you need to do this with a brush, it's just put a little light coat on there. So now what I'm going to do is just start wrinkling it. And if there's a, a, a a, sm a spot in your painting that you know is going to be kind of smooth, don't put so many wrinkles in that area. Like I'm going to have a little pathway going up in the bottom right hand side. So the bottom right hand side, it's going to get some wrinkles, but I'm not going to super crinkle it. I want to crinkle it where I know the cherry blossoms are going to be. So I'm just gently going to mission it here. Open it up and see if there's some really harsh lines. And you have to be pretty gentle with it though, because it, when it starts tearing, then you've got you, know, you have to the glue is important when it starts tearing. Try not to tear it. Okay, so there's my piece of paper that's been dampened and crinkled, and it's been crinkled more at the top. Then at the bottom. So I left this part in here less crinkled than up here. And I smooth that out a little bit. And while it's still damp and crinkly and not pasted down, I'm going to take my, my round brush, my number 10. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with permanent rows. Oh, I guess I should, I should stop and let you guys crinkle your paper. Yeah, please. Thank you. Okay, so then once the paper is crinkled, I take my brush and make a puddle of permanent rows. And I use the side of my brush. I'm not painting straight down like this. I'm trying to use the belly of the brush so I have it almost parallel to the paper. And I'm just gonna brush it over the tops of the wrinkles so that it's catching some places. That puddle shouldn't have too much water in it, right? Well, it depends how wet your paper is, because my paper is pretty dry now, so I'm getting some very dark areas. My blossoms are very pink. I 
I kind of made just a, on the one I'm painting right now, I sort of just made a square. It's better if there's a little bit of shape to it. Maybe I'll make it go off out the page and then low over here. That's better. So that's the next step is to add some pink. <laughs> And now what I'm going to do is make some green and add some greens like there's some mountains back in there. When I lived in Manteca, we had almond orchards nearby. And I loved going out into the almond orchards with the dog and taking pictures every spring. That's pretty dark and pretty ugly. I don't know that I like that. It's not very pretty. Let me try again. Maybe I'm going to lighten up my green with bumblebee. Oh, you know what it is? I've got indigo in my brush. It's not rinsed out very well. So just a tiny bit of indigo is messing up my colors. All right, there we go. I look, it's going to be better now. Okay, let me try. It's gonna work now. Okay, so this is burnt sienna and Antwerp blue. That's my dark green that I love so much. I'm gonna make a lighter green with bumblebee yellow and Antwerp. I'm gonna just put it in this little spot right here. There's a lighter green. Okay, so I used Antwerp blue for both those greens and one's with bumblebee yellow or hands of yellow medium and the other one is with burnt sienna. And I'm just going to take these colors and I do the same thing. So I don't want to put my mountain range right smack and halfway up the painting. I don't want to split it exactly in half. I want to drop it down. I'm just using again the belly of my brush, and I'm going to kind of go around the green, or not the green, the pink. Bumblebee and Antwerp, and also. Burnt Sienna and Antwerp. So one makes a darker green and one makes a lighter green. And I'm just sort of putting it in. While this is still kind of damp, I might add a little bit more pink to these blossoms, just kind of going over the same spots and darken them up. Well, it's a low branch, something, I don't know yet. So that's the next step is add some greens. The next step is going to be to add the tree trunk to this. And we're going to have to figure out where it is. 
on your paint on each of your paintings you have to look at your crinkles and where your pinks are and figure out where you're going to put that in so you definitely don't want to put your trunk straight up the center of the painting you want it off center and you want it to start down maybe an inch from the bottom and then go up so the, the colors that i'm going to use for this are burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. But I'm going to paint them one at a time and let them mix later as, as I paint them. So I'm going to start with burnt sienna. So this technique of painting with one color at a time and letting them mix on the paper is a technique that Dee uses with an instructor she goes to. What's his name, Dee? Oh, I have been to one of his classes, Dale Leighton. Dale Leighton. Yeah. So I've got burnt sienna on my brush here. And now I'm going to be using the tip of my brush, not the, not the butt, not the belly, not sideways, but up and down. And I have to kind of figure out where I'm going to paint this tree trunk. So I definitely want it to start about here. And then I see this low hanging branch. So what I'm going to have to do is go like start here. Here's my some roots. Now I'm going to go up. Then I'm going to stop and catch it up here again. And I have to, I'm trying to do two things. One is follow some of the crinkles and the other thing is to go to where the blossoms are. <laughs> so I've got two things to do at once. So this one can have a, I'm gonna worry about that branch in a little, little while. But I want to, I can see kind of crinkles going over here to hit this one. And out here and up here and out there. If this one breaks, I can get these guys and they can go this way. Now I need to get this side of the tree. So I have a major branch coming off that way. So now I have to start kind of making my trunk a little thicker because it has to be as thick as the two branches together. Still just using burnt sienna so far. And now I've got to go get, I'm going to go up this way. And up to there, and up over here, this way maybe. And then I need to somehow get something that catches all these guys. And I think I'm going to make a, a bent branch that comes down and gets them. And I see kind of a, So that's the start. That's all burnt sienna. Now what I'm going to do while it, this is still wet is get some French ultramarine blue and it's going to be pure. I have to pick a side that the sun's on in this painting. And I think it's going to Actually, I'm going to make the sun coming from the left hand side so that I get shadow down where my hand is, where my brush is here, instead of the shadow on this side, the little side. I want the shadow here. So if I make, so I'm going to make the sun coming from the left side. So with my French ultramarine blue now, I'm going to make this the shadowed side of the, of the trunk and the branches. I'm going to paint right over that burnt sienna. Underneath and to the left side of these branches. And I might just go off and make some branches that are pure burnt um, French ultramarine blue. 
So here's the left side and underneath and over the top of it. So I'm just painting right over the top of the burnt sienna. And the left side. The bottom and the left side. And yeah, I'm painting on top of the burnt sienna, but the left side of the burnt sienna. And the color is? It's French ultramarine blue. Oh, this is fun. Hello. That's a tree now. So my next step is to glue this piece of paper down onto my backing board. So I have this glue here, which is 50% water and 50% glue. It's the cheapest stuff I could get. So I'm just gonna Put a little glue down. I'm going to use a, a brush to smooth it out. Are you putting the glue on the backing paper or the? It's on the backing paper, yes. My masa paper's up here, my back, I glued my backing paper. Now I need to remember to rinse my brush out, the glue out of my brush. Because that would be an expensive mistake. And then I take the paper and set it on there and start smoothing it out. Now, if your paint's wet, it's going to, you're gonna smudge the paint. And what I saw Chi Cheng Chi do, he used a roll of paper towels. Oh. As his rolling pin. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've tried that a couple tricks and I, it hasn't really worked for me. So I'm just using my fingers. And then if there's a couple spots that didn't really stick, I'll just add a little more glue. So it's kind of whatever you can get to make work for you to get it to stick down. And I'm gonna smooth out these wrinkles down here in my foreground. And maybe even up in the sky. Well, that glue's not making, not making it stick very well. I think just using the palm of my hand is the best smusher. Love that word, smush. I just smush the glue out. Okay, 
and go. And I'm going to mute it and blow dry this. papers glued down and pretty dry. What I'm going to do now is add some sky and the pathway in here, petals, shadow. I'm just going to finish up. So I'm going to start with the sky. That's got some rain in it. Let me get some clean water. So I just want to make some light blue. Sometimes when I've just got uh, just a sky to put in, I'll use cerulean. You could also just use Antwerp, even French. I'm going to start with just cerulean. You can cerulean and manganese blue mixture. I keep them in together. They're very similar. Just going to add it. Very light. And I'm going around the pink now. I can, add, I can paint just a little water. Some of it will start to sort of make some purples, mix a little bit in the paper. And I kind of stop at the green, get to the green. That's my sky, just added blue, pale blue. And I'm trying to paint more than just the crinkles now. I'm trying to get it to really be more solid painting the folds, the crinkles. For the bottom, I'm going to start with raw sienna. So I've just taken a brush full of water and sort of wet it down here. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to clean off a little spot. I'm going to take raw sienna. I don't use a lot of raw sienna these days, but I think it's going to make sort of a nice pathway in. I'm painting one color at a time, and now I'm going to start to mix them up. Mix some colors in with this. So if there's blossoms that have fallen underneath the tree, those are going to, yeah? What was that last color you put on there? It was raw sienna. But in my raw sienna, I have a little bit of gold, so that shows up a little bit too. I see, okay. Thank you. So now I'm going to take the pink. And I'm going to imagine where they would fall on the ground. So they're going to fall on the ground at the same level as the trunk. And below, below the tree. And now I'm going to add some shadow. So if 
I'm going to use French ultramarine blue as my shadow. And it's going to be to the right of the trunk. There's my French ultramarine blue. It's going to start at the trunk. It's going to, it's going to be in those blossoms too. There'll be a little bit on this side because the sun I'm, I'm assuming is kind of shining down this way. You can make it come more in front too. I'm gonna add some burnt sienna to that shadow. Because we're trying to add these colors one at a time like that guy's name I can't say. And then I want sort of a little path coming in this way. So I'm going to add some darks that go back. Just that was a little burnt sienna. Now I'm going to add a little bit of French ultramarine blue. They never turn out the same. Looking at my screen, I can see that my trunk's really not quite dark enough. It pops better if the trunk is darker. So I'm going to go in with another layer of burnt sienna over the top of my trunk now that it's dry. And just try to make it pop more. Still, I'm doing it one color at a time, so I'm going to add this color. Then I'm going to add the French over the top of that. Just because I'm playing around. I think that's better. I need, I need something to catch these guys. So, My branches are too thick. Can you, uh, well. They spread with water. That's what uh, I Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to add just a little bit darker color right in here at the base of that, whatever that green stuff is. So it's going to be burnt sienna. If I have that much dark on that side of the tree, I'll have a little bit on this side of the tree. Maybe I'll add some more pink in that. Let's see what happens. Nah, that was not good. OK, I'm going to try French old burning blue now. I like that. It's all wet. Oh yeah, and a little bit over here, and then I can sort of make the pathway. I think I'm gonna quit. That's enough. That's nice. Here's Penny. I have, I have the same trouble that Terry has with my branches looking like I don't know what monsters. They got big. Well, they yeah. Some, some trees have big branches like that. Yeah, yeah, but they should be matching the lower part of the tree. Well, you made the trunk nice and thick. Yeah, I made it, kept making it thicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's lovely. I love the purple underneath it. Here's Fran's. Pretty. Fran, what paper did you end up using, Fran? That's rice paper. Rice paper, uh -oh. ah. I love the yellows at the bottom. Yeah, I love your your foreground. And your tree's got a nice uneven shape to it. And I like the the blue. It's 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 lovely. Thank Very you. good for using this technique. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready, Mary Kay. Okay, Mary Kay. Okay, Mary, hang on, let me. Okay, 
Who are we doing? Mary, okay. Okay, so it's okay. on um, watercolor paper. I did, and I wet it on both sides and crinkled it. Really? And it did that? Because the paper towel just kind of fell apart. Wow. It worked out really well with the crinkles and everything. And your your tree is striking, and your sky is beautiful. And I like the seeing through the trees. Or not the trees. Yeah, I guess they're trees. Or those, that background, that background greens. You left enough area in that to look through. Very nice. Thank good you. to know you can do this without masa paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a little closer to you. So we can see it, but we can't see you. There you go. Yeah, you did it. Nice. Very good. Thank I like you. your, your trunk is nice and thick. thick. Yeah, and it gets to your branches. And everything's soft. I like it. Thank yep. you, Mary. Very nice. Thank you for teaching us. You're welcome. <laughs> it is, that is beautiful. Very yeah. delicate and catches the feel. I feel like it's it's a spring tree in, in blossom. It looks like the tree's giving off rays of light up into the sky. Yeah, oh, it does, doesn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. The tree has its own aura. <laughs> Lovely. That is pretty. Nice, Vicki. Wow. I like it. It's beautiful. I love that yellow, or that not yellow, that blue spot in your tree. It really makes you look Ooh. like you're looking through and then it's got, got, the, got the sky behind it. The way your colors all blended together is beautiful. Right. And I, I like your greens in the back that you left white in them. So it looks almost like there's some snow back there. And in the springtime, that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all those things, you don't really paint them, but it just gives you that feeling or that impression. It's really pretty. It's nice and bright. I, it's like little, little, little birds. It's like little uh, origami everywhere. <laughs> the one thing that I would do, Elaine, that I would suggest that you do, hold your painting up, is you need to, uh, you need to make your tree trunk not stop for the green, only oh. the pink. Yeah. Okay. Because the green's in the background, so the tree trunk would be over it. Right. And the pink can be in front of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff. Oh, that's tree's got personality. Ooh. <laughs> pink bumps on it. Doesn't really have a lot of blossoms. You, if you squirt it with a little water, a little spray bottle, you can get them to loosen up. I did that. Okay. My paper got so wet that the branches started to run. Okay. <laughs> so well, I, they look like orchids on there. Yeah, they, they do. do. Yeah, the giant orchid tree. Yeah. It has some kind of disease, actually. <laughs> you know, my favorite part is right at the crook of that trunk where that big branch comes off. There's kind of a lightness right there. I love that spot. Okay. Well, Chris, <laughs> I know this is not your style, but I love to see it. Right what? I compare that to a signature comment. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I look at mine, I think, oh, yeah. Well, I'd like to thank everybody on YouTube for joining us, and I will sign off. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. That was fun.